Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. This video is going to contain my first look at the legend difficulty of Ayaha and Totoha's Wrath. This is my first ever clear of this content in solo play. I was able to finally get this done this past weekend in the lead up to reset, so just barely got my weekly clear in time and was super happy to do so. Had a lot of fun checking out this fight, so I wanted to make this video to discuss and share my first clear. Definitely still a novice when it comes to the twins. Have not done a lot of regular play for the twins battle, and Legend especially, I've only done this one clear. It took several attempts, so I have a little bit of experience with this fight, but this is my first ever success, so it's by no means an expert level run. But still, I thought it'd be fun to post and share and we could check it out together, to talk about some of the mechanics of this fight, and also hear from y'all about what your experience with this battle has been like so far. So getting into the action here, phase one, the twins are separated and one of the coolest new moves that they do, in my opinion, is this black hole spinning axe attack that Atoha does in the center while Ayaha charges up a slash and strike and you're actually able to aim her to the center if you're careful, I missed it there, but aim her to the center to where she hits a Toha and they stun uh, both of them. So I think that that's one of the sweet things about the twins mechanically that I love to see carried over in the legend difficulty. You can actually utilize their own moves against them at times. That's one of the things that really sets them apart from the other Agito battles in my opinion and there are other ways that's going to manifest itself later in this fight. But we're almost done here with phase one. One of the other things that really struck me about this battle is just how many different roles that you might want to have fulfilled on a given team. You probably want access to freeze. You probably want access to frostbite. It's helpful to have a high hit count for a mechanic we're about to see here shortly, which makes mana casters or other ranged weapon types really good. You see here when the phase changes, the actual Ayaha and the Toha fuse together as the butterfly become invincible for a while until you take out these shadow clones that they summon who have a hit count based uh, HP instead of a normal HP. So we're able to do it there quickly thanks to Lapis and we're also able to tank that uh, global AoE that happens using our defensive buff. That is my general strategy for that is I'll just use my Agito skill to make sure I'm able to survive. I don't know if that's actually percentage-based damage similar to Nidhogg because it's never killed me so I don't know if it actually can kill you but I just use the defensive buff as a precaution just in case. Here we're seeing some mechanics that are similar to the master difficulty that purple cross attack can happen in any of the four corners of the arena similar to master and similar to master as well. This butterfly summoning attack, these butterflies are pretty tanky unless you're able to afflict them so you want to make sure that you clear those out, otherwise you could wipe potentially if they move to the center. Now we get some other attacks that are similar to Master, these swipes that Ayaha and Toha will do together, as well as Midari Mai. This is a very dangerous move that you could potentially get one shot by, but if you learn the pattern, you can reliably dodge it. And you'll notice I start dealing one damage here. I'm honestly still not sure why this is the case. I tried to read through the notes on uh, Ayaha and Toa's page for Legend Difficulty. Now I'm doing more than one damage, but if I look at the top of the screen, it doesn't look like I've afflicted them or done anything, so I'm not really sure what I did that caused me to start dealing more than one damage, but thankfully I am dealing more than one damage. One of the cool things though, having Lapis and Gala Mascula both, is that I do have access to Dispel, which I think is another one of those integral pieces that you really want to have on your team here to be successful in this fight. We do get our break. I switch to Reborn Poseidon to deal some damage, and just a lot is going on. There's bombs dropping, butterflies spawning in, there are these uh, black puddles, if you will, across the arena that are hazards themselves. Now we have laser beams coming in that you can direct to hit uh, the boss as well. Back to dealing one damage again, which I don't love, but we're fine. I think eventually I just break through it, but I'm not exactly sure what I do to do so, because you saw I dispelled, I'm still dealing one. So please let me know if you know the secret behind that uh, in the comments below. I just powered my way through it basically without, uh, without really putting a lot of thought behind uh, how to deal with that. Fortunately, I was enough, but 
as you'll see by the time on this video, this was a really tight clear and we almost didn't get the job done, but to circle back to all the things happening on the screen at once, one of the things I really like about this battle is there is a sense of spectacle. And that's actually one of the things I really liked about Legend CL as well. Master, to me, just felt a little bit boring, just a little bit dull visually. And I think with Ayaha and Toha, they are one of the most spectacular bosses. The colors, the massive attacks that they do, so I really do like that about it. It can be a little bit hard visually to tell what's going on on the screen at times though, I must admit. Now we get to the Berserk phase, and similar to the phase transition, we're not able to actually damage the Ayaha and the Toha main boss there until we deal with the Shadow Clones. I think this is a cool touch to make her Berserk phase feel different than the other Agito battles, and you can see the twins have separated and are doing the spinning axe attack with uh, Ayaha up top again. That is very dangerous, but you can stun them. I didn't get it successfully there, but there are ways to definitely mitigate that, and just by having a high hit count weapon type, I'm hopefully going to get through this relatively quickly here, because the longer this goes on, the more dangerous it is for me. I did get burnt, which is definitely not good, but I have some time to ride out the burn, because right after that, we get this purple AoE cross attack again. I'm able to just lead my AI to safety, and we're totally good on that front. Now that the two clones are defeated, we're able to attack uh, Ayaha and the Toha proper again. But as you can see, we're still dealing one damage, which is not ideal. So basically, I'm just brute forcing my way through this. I don't know how to stop this. I'm just trying to dispel, flick everything possible that I can think of that would uh, prevent this from happening. But it's not going great. There's definitely a lot of hazards now, laser beams. I have bombs that are going to spawn in on me. Um, so yeah, this is where I say that the visual clutter definitely gets to be a lot, and finally I see I'm dealing damage, which does make me very happy, so we're back in the game here. Uh, but it's super dangerous, and we get burnt. Not good. I know that eventually there's going to be a big purple area of effect, and if I'm low on HP, that will one-shot Lapis, so I'm thinking here, I'm gonna have to use my dragon defensively. I just gotta wait until I get it back and I'm no longer burned, and then I will probably have to dragon. I think that's what I did if I remember correctly. One of the other cool things... Oh no, I just tanked it. I got so lucky. Wow. One of the other cool things that I was gonna talk about is Ayaha and Totoha gained the ability to cause Scorch Rent, which just feels like an upgrade. It's an upgrade in the game's direction, obviously. It's a brand new affliction. But I think it's cool that they can cause that because it's another level of fear to what they do, right? It's something that you can't really prevent or cure off, unlike burn and stun, which can be cleansed or uh, can be prevented with affliction resistance prints. Yes, you can have like an affliction guard print, which could save you up to three times from Scorch Rent, but it's not as much of a guarantee that you're going to be able to uh, survive and protect yourself against that. So I think that that's a nice addition to the repertoire. I have to say, overall, you can probably tell by my tone, but this really reinvigorated my interest in Dragalia. I really love this fight. I'm looking forward to checking it out. It's not an easy one for me, so I'm looking forward to the challenge component of it. Prior to using Lapis, I was attempting to do this with Sharpshooter Cerise, as I think I mentioned at the beginning of this video, or if not in past videos. And I got super close, but ultimately swapped to Lapis just for the sure thing. I felt like the extra dispel helped. And for me, not really knowing how to deal with that one damage situation, I just thought, let me give myself as much dispel as possible and maybe that will make a difference. Um, my afflictions are starting to get resisted there as well, so yeah, we're definitely in dire straits as far as our damage output, even though Ayaha and Toa's HP looks like it's very low. The Berserk phase is always longer than uh, it may appear. Anyway, we just continue along with the fight. Eventually, we are able to get a victory. It is close, and there are multiple times when me or my AI almost died, so I don't know how easy I'll be able to reproduce this in this coming week, but definitely gonna try to do so. I think this is probably gonna be my last Dragalia video for a couple of days. Have some things planned for this weekend, but we'll be back as soon as I can to talk about our upcoming Onslaught event. Probably going to be next week though for that, as well as any news on the banner that we get with that. Have not seen anything yet, but did see a character next to Fabless Tobias, whose name I don't know yet, but whose design I really, really like. 
Anyway, y'all, that is pretty much going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed this look at Legend Difficulty of Ayahan Toha's Wrath. I apologize for not having all the answers at this point, and I feel like I'm overlooking something very simple, but I try to read through the notes for them. I don't know how to avoid uh, dealing a minuscule amount of damage. It was still a blast taking them on, though. Thank you as always for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoy this video. Take care, and I'll see you next time.